Hello you guys, this is Josh Vision, and I'm here to give you my Season 1, Episode 2 review of Da Vinci's Demons. So in this episode, we are left with Da Vinci trying to figure out a way on how to construct his musket cannons and to make sure they are actually like functioning well enough so that he won't have his head chopped off by Lorenzo. So that's basically the ultimatum of this episode. Not only does Da Vinci have to deal with the fact, like I mentioned before, of him trying to figure out how to get his cannons to work properly, but he's also trying to figure out the whole thing with the Book of Leaves, the he um, the Vaults of Heaven, and this key which he finds in the Jewish character's body, and what's the purpose behind it. Another thing that should be known in this episode is the fact is this love triangle between Da Vinci, Lorenzo, and um, Lucretia. Now, there was a part when um, Da Vinci was actually doing Lucretia's portrait in which she says she felt guilty. And Da Vinci was like, we mean guilty about what? And she's like, I felt guilty not just about cheating on my husband with Lorenzo, but also about cheating on Lorenzo with you. And Da Vinci kind of jests with her and says, well, which guilt do you prefer? And she was like, you know, I prefer you and I also prefer Lorenzo. Like, I don't favor one or the other, but in regards to, like, positions we're in right now, the society we live in, Lorenzo has to be first uh, ahead of you, unfortunately, which uh, Da Vinci isn't so keen on, but he gets the political... Um, situation at hand. Nothing that's noted, it will kind of span upon a bit, is the fact that Da Vinci and his father's complete disregard for one another. We have Da Vinci's father really, um, how can I say, really going at Da Vinci about him trying to sway the Medici family on his inventions and his inventions of war. You know, like I mentioned before, his musket cannons. And Da Vinci's like, listen, man, I got all the things I need, I got the signatures. I got everything covered, don't worry about it, nothing can contain me. And then we had Da Vinci's father going with the nut shot, basically, like boom, or the gut shot. He's like, listen, you're just a bastard, you know what I mean? I spilled my seed into some random woman a couple decades ago. Nothing more. Your status contains you. And I was like, wow, what kind of father you know, is he? Now, in regards to Riario, now we know from the previous episode that Riario seems to be like, basically him and Da Vinci are like opposites, but you could tell they're like intellectual peers. Even though Da Vinci is, is the more superior one, Riari isn't, far, Riari isn't really that far off. So we see him um, talk with Lucretia. Actually, some of Lucretia to go see him and the rest of his men late at night, which Lucretia was against. She kind of complained about it, and she was welcomed with a good right hand and a slap by Riario just to shut her the hell up. So he asks Lucretia, what, was da Vinci, what did Da Vinci uh, say to her? And she mentioned the fact that only thing Da Vinci mentioned to her, uh, it really wasn't about the Book of Leaves. He didn't even mention that. He mentioned the whole, he asked a question about the Jew. Um, why was he arrested? What sense would it make for him to be arrested for a theft if there was nothing stolen in the library? And like things like of that, of that ilk. And Rara was like, okay, why would we ask that? Is this like some type of misdirection? Why would he care about this? And what does it have to do with the Book of Leaves? So Lucretia is kind of as clueless as Riario is and replies by saying that, you know what, maybe he's just smarter than you and there's a reason behind his madness, essentially. So Riario kind of laughs it off and he basically put marks on, on Lucretia, one on her chest and one, I believe, on her cheek or her forehead and says that she should go back to her usual night activities of basically being a whore, essentially. So... Another thing that should be mentioned is the fact that when Lucretia, after post-sex with Lorenzo, there had, uh, Lorenzo bitches to her that he's having a banquet and that Riario is basically going to be a guest of interest, unfortunately, even though he would have it like another way, but Riario's coming. Um, and at this banquet, we find out basically what this whole, what the, like the main conflict is in regards to like from here on out. So, I believe Lucretia mentioned to Riario before he reached the banquet and after the whole, uh, the whole conversation he had with her when he smacked the crap out of her that Lorenzo was using Da Vinci as basically like a weapons maker in order to be prepared just in case the Pope and the, uh, the city-state of Naples attacked them. So, Riario is well aware of this and he makes it clear to Lorenzo and his brother, when they're alone in a private setting, that he's aware of the fact 
that that's what Da Vinci's doing. That's what he has Da Vinci, you know, doing for him. And that Da Vinci's not just some mere debutante. He's not just some type of painter. Da Vinci is actually very, very important. And he said to Lorenzo that, listen, this could be seen as an act of war. And Lorenzo, although shocked and kind of thinking out the top of his head at this moment, he's like, you know what? No, else could be a, 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 an act of war when you kill Forza. Because we all know that you was behind it and possibly the Passy family, who you guys are probably getting loans and money from to help your armies with Naples, essentially. So they put all their cards on the deck, essentially. And Riara's like, listen, if you really want to go, if you're really about that life, then okay. You know, we're, we'll take you on. You know, so he leaves and Lorenzo speaks with his brother and and their advisor. And he's like, yo, how in God's name did they know about Da Vinci and the whole weapons plan? And speaking of his whole weapons plan, we have Riario capture Nico and torture him, put his hand in some type of skin shredder or something. And it was enough, obviously, and I can't blame the kid, it was enough for Nico to sort of lead them to Da Vinci's art studio. But, like from last week's episode when we seen Da Vinci's chest, which explodes if someone messes with it and try to open it forcibly, that's what Nico used as a way to sort of get them away and, and to kill some of them. And to give like basically a signal to those the rest of the people in the in the art studio, Verrocchio Studio, that the enemies are here or something. So I believe Da Vinci, Zora and all of them come just in time. Riario's able to escape. And I think Lorenzo actually chokes Da Vinci and threatens him and threatens him once again, saying, Listen, if you do not finish this once again within the deadline, I said, you'll be executed. So after that, we had Da Vinci speak with Verrocchio about the Book of Leaves. So Da Vinci finds out where um, the Jewish character put the Book of Leaves. It was in the library. And he finds this out basically by this blind man who overheard everything that happened that night in regards to when the Jewish man was running away from the authorities. So Da Vinci finds that the Jewish guy, since the Hebrews um, read right to left, he would have had to have put the Book of Leaves like in a right to left kind of sequence in a sense in terms of the shelves and which row. So that's how he's able to find it. I, believe he was, I think Da Vinci was able to find the book around um, like section 12 or row 12, something like that. But he found the book. And also the blood on the floor was a, was a keen giveaway as well. So he reads it to Verrocchio. Well, he asked Verrocchio to translate because Verrocchio's Hebrew was better than his. So, it was all, so what was discovered was basically um, in this book of Leeds is the vault of heaven. And that seemed like something something important is in this vault of heaven. But Verrocchio's like, man, this is a bunch of BS. I heard this for years, decades since I've been around. It's just parlor tricks, man. There's no point trying to go for it. You should be focusing in on the muskets because if you don't, you die. You can't be multitasking. Like that's and he basically chastises Loren, uh, Leonardo for that. And Leonardo's like, listen, this has. I believe this is a sign. This has to be true because. This is the only way in which I feel as though I can find my mother. You know I can remember every person's face, yet I can't remember my mother's. So we have that sentimental moment between him and Verrocchio, which is basically his only father figure, considering his father is just an absolute prick. So at this banquet, we have Riario, we have Lucretia, we have Leonardo, the Medici family. Actually, I think it's like the first time, maybe the second time actually, we have to see we actually see Lorenzo's wife, I believe, and children actually. So yeah, no, we I, no we've seen them in the previous episode, but let's the second time. So yeah, okay, second time. So we have this very funny and kind of jerky scene in which Lorenzo, when he has a little pageantry, basically trying to recreate the Garden of Eden. He was saying how in the Garden of Eden, how they also had uninvited guests. You know, obviously the serpent and the snake. But he was actually ref referencing Riario. Riario and Riario caught on to that pretty quick. And so did Leonardo, who chuckled a bit. And Riario looked like he wanted to choke the hell out of Lorenzo. So after that, we have this quick, we have this really important thing between Riario and Leonardo, in which Riario's like, listen, you know who I am, I know who you are. Let's stop with the games, okay? You have what I want. So either you take me or give me the Book of Leaves, or I will take you by force, or I will kill you and take the Book of Leaves regardless. And Leonardo was like, listen, one, there's no point. The Book of Leaves is kind of useless, like this key, unless, you mean, you can find this vault of heaven. And then Riario was like, hmm, interesting, true. So I'll just take you. And 
Vince is like, listen, I'm not going to go willingly. And even if you did try to kill me, I wouldn't betray Florence for you. Even if you did offer me, as Rario mentioned, um, the, the secret vault, like the secret um, archives of the back and all that knowledge, you know, and we all know how Da Vinci is about knowledge. So Rario notices the fact that Da Vinci clearly loves or likes Lucretia. So he's like, you know what? If you won't do it, perhaps I can find a better reason to, you know, entice you to do it. I know desire and I know how to manipulate it. <laughs> I love this character. He's so awesome. Especially with his facial features. It's like one part of him wants to crack up and laugh, yet at the same time it goes straight to a like a deadpan like I'm gonna kill you look. Ooh, I'm gonna hurt you look. This dude's just very a very interesting character, you know? And it's hard to read him and also what's in his head. Um so while this is going on, we have Lorenzo and Giuliano watching this so basically they think along with some of their soldiers and and their men their right-hand men that da vinci is going to eventually um betray florence and basically join the pope and riario so that turns out not to be the case at all da vinci actually found a way on how to get his cannons to work and it was all about the time of day essentially because he had it like the way the cannons were construed he has some type of thing in which once the sun shined in a certain way, it would light like a match in a sense that connected to the cannons. So he would just stall. He would just stall for time when speaking to Riario and company about the whole thing about knowledge. Um, da Vinci said that he wouldn't want to join Riario and the Pope because he feels as though they try to suppress knowledge, and they don't care about like being progressive and trying to spread it. But Riario's comment was like, "No," he said, "I'm not about." suppressing knowledge i just want to administer it i want to control it so da vinci and him are kind of at a impasse if you would say so da vinci basically knowing that the medici the medici family lorenzo giuliano and company would follow him because that's what he wanted to he wanted them to follow him and to observe his cannons in action so he says my loyalty to florence lorenzo the Magnificent, his foolish brother, <laughs> and company. And then he shot those cannons like a mother. Like, this dude, that that was a that was really insane, like, sight. Like, the, the amount of men he killed, I think he probably killed off six of them and maimed at least one or two. The rest got away with Riario and Lupo, I believe. The guy that actually uh, created the secret archives uh, for the Vatican. And I believe Leonardo was saying, run, you cowards, run if you can. So that look on Lorenzo's was like, like he was about, he wanted to snap, you know, Da Vinci's neck. Then again, Da Vinci is shooting some cannons at him, you know. So either way, Da Vinci proves his worth to Lorenzo and the Manchi family and to Florence. So after this, we have Lorenzo actually invite um, Da Vinci to his country estate. And, da and he mentions to Da Vinci that he wants Da Vinci to sort of play like a double agent of sorts and try to figure out who's getting all this, this intel on him because he was saying there's no way that Riario should have known about Da Vinci being his weapon creator, basically. There's no way. So Da Vinci's like, okay, it's all good. So Da Vinci sees Lucretia and they have a little bit of an awkward look at each other. And, you know, I think Lorenzo just thinks Da Vinci's harmless. He's like, it's just Da Vinci, you know, he's going to make us some more, more, some more war weapons and we're going to take out Riario and company. So he goes back upstairs, or he leads Lucretia back upstairs, and we see Lucretia and Da Vinci just stare at each other like long, like like they want to be with each other, you know, but circumstances fucks everything. So after this, it's revealed, basically, during the last part of this episode, that Riario had the second key. You mean, because Leonardo has the first one, and Riario had the second one. So that's why he was so confident, even after that whole uh, gun canning shootout. He was like, Da Vinci needs me regardless in order to get to, to find the true point of the Book of Leaves or, or the Vault of Heaven. And we find out also near the end that what was in the book that the Jewish guy left, it was like stagnography, like a stag, stagnography or something like that. But basically it's like some type of thing which is like a, like a code hidden within a code whether an image or file or video. And it's like some type of constellation in which Da Vinci is able to figure it out by laying them, laying them, like mapping them out like in rows and sections and stuff. 
and he was able to figure out that it's actually a part of somewhere in the world. That's where the where the where the where the where the, where the vault of heaven is. It's in another part of the of, a, of the world of, of land that's undiscovered. So I'm looking forward to what the next episode brings. I'm so excited. So if I miss anything, you guys, I'm sorry. A lot of things happen this episode. My bad. So, yeah. Uh, I would give this episode, like, definitely, like, a 9 out of 10. I love this stuff. I love Riario. He's, like, the best villain, at least I've started so far. Um, da Vinci is great. He's kind of a prick, but I like how we really saw more of his positive qualities in this episode. Lucretia, such a tragic character. And, yeah. Lorenzo... I like him, but he has so much of a temper. Then again, it's that matchy temper, I guess. You know, history did say they have bad tempers. So I shouldn't be surprised by Lorenzo's outburst against uh, Da Vinci. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. And adios, Josh Vision. Have a good one.